So I'm in a little bit of a different. First off, I thought I was 37 years old. I'm actually, wait, I think I was 38 and I'm 37, or I think I was 37 and I'm 36. Hold on. Let me do the math real quick. No, yeah. I'm, I thought I was 37 and I'm 36. I'm turning 37 this year. Okay. So that's, that's the first thing. That's but awesome, though. You are younger than you thought. <laughs> I, there, there may be a chance I might be having a midlife crisis. <laughs> chance I'm having my first ever midlife crisis. And let me kind of explain. So this happened at some point. I don't, I can't really like put my finger on when last season, but at some point last season, it really felt like I was just kind of going through the motions and um, like I was going to practice because like that was a part of the routine. I was going to play tournaments because I, you know, I have to go and try to get points to make it to the disc golf pro tour championship. It, it started feeling like I was just doing stuff because I had to. And that was like a major shift and I was thinking maybe it was like, okay, maybe I'm just feeling this way because it has been a long season. You have played a lot of tournaments and like, it's just kind of getting that monotonous over and over. And this off season, I really spent this off season spending time with Kelsey, spending time with my like family and, and going on trips and doing all that. And there wasn't that same fire, energy, passion that I had in previous years of like waking up and being like, I want to go putt or I want to go to the field and practice or I want to go to this course and see if I can beat my score or later in the night after I've already practiced, you know, a couple hours that day, later in the night being like, I'm going to go out and putt for an hour. Like that wasn't like that wasn't there and it was something I was trying to figure out. And then maybe I was like, okay, maybe if I just, just don't do anything, maybe that hunger, that fire will come back. And it didn't, it, it a hundred percent did not this tournament, this, this tournament was, um, quite frankly, it was, it was very boring. Yeah. And, I'm at a part, I'm at a portion in my life and, and I got to this portion fairly, I would say fairly quickly of where there was a year or two after college of where like I sat down and I was like, I have to freaking grind and I'm making no money, but I see the light at the end of the tunnel. But then once I got to that point, I always, I, I continued to work hard, but it didn't feel like work because I loved what I was doing. I loved going and filming six to eight hours doing these trick shot videos. I loved going and playing in these tournaments. I loved going and running track workouts with my team. Uh, everything with Ultimate, I never once in my Ultimate career felt unpassionate, not wanting to practice, not wanting to go to a tournament. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sometimes waking up early and doing a track out track workout or waking up early and going to the gym. Yeah. Sometimes I was like, Oh man, I kind of wish I didn't want to do this, but then it always would snap out and be like, I have that goal. I have that team. I want to go. And every time going into a tournament, I was always looking forward to it. I was always excited to competing. This was the first time that I, I could not care less. I couldn't care less. And it was so, it was such a, it was so hard. It was so difficult going out there and it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I shot 10 under par or if I shot 10 over par, it didn't matter if I birdied a hole. I didn't birdie a hole. I legitimately just was not interested. I wasn't having fun. And, uh, I mean, I wrote on here that my favorite moment playing those three rounds was on hole 15, Tim Barham got one of his discs stuck in a tree and I had to get, we 
started picking up rocks and trying to hit the disc out of the tree to get it come down. That was the most fun I had the entire week was trying to hit this disc out of this tree. And so like, I'm in this weird spot where I have never, um, I have never chased money, right? I have never done, I've never made decisions in my life to try to make more money because at the end of the day, I always want to do something that I was passionate about. And if I put my time and effort into something that I'm super passionate about, I will be successful in that. I will work myself in a way to become successful in that. And I think if you look at disc golf, I feel like I have done that already, right? I have seen some success, not as much as I wanted, obviously, but I have seen some success at tournaments. We have a very successful podcast. Uh, Foundation is extremely successful. Atlas is is extremely successful. So there's parts of disc golf that I have found success in. I'm trying to figure out what is going on because I don't, I honestly don't have an answer. I don't know what to do. And it's a weird one because um, I've never had this issue before. I've never had an issue of where I've, I haven't been dedicated, motivated, passionate to chase after a goal. And so it was, it was a weird tournament. And I don't know if people could sense that when they're out there watching me, but um you know, I, I ended up birding like hole one on round two and round three. And it was just like, you know, I would just pick the disc out of the basket and like start walking to hole two. It was, it was almost if I just was just ready for it to be done. And the thing that's the weird and I can't figure it out is like, this has never happened before. I've never, I've never had this happen before with anything. Normally it's um, always like some sort of injury, something, something is causing me not to, to continue to follow my passion. Like something is prohibiting me from doing that. And, uh, I don't know if I, I if I'm at the age now of where like leaving Kelsey all the time is tough or what, but like, I, I legitimately just did not enjoy playing disc golf this past weekend. And, uh, it was, it was a tough realization to have. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just a classic case of burnout to me, honestly. I mean, it's pretty simple. We've all had those things. Like, I've been playing for 17 years now, Brody, and I've had years. I've had months and months and months of feeling that way of, like, why am I here? I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. And just kind of going through the motions. But what it comes down to for for me, and I can only speak for myself, is I've always had um, goals that I want to reach. And those goals come before everything for me, right? Like it doesn't matter if I set a goal and this is, I was taught this a long time ago. If I set an ultimate goal, then that's just what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to stop until I get that ultimate goal. That's the way that I work through that time. You're going to have burnout because waking up and practicing and all that stuff is it sucks. Like you said, sometimes, sometimes it's awesome. Sometimes it's great to get up and, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I want to do this. I want to do that stuff. For me, what I found is the days where you don't want to do it, finding a way to get it done. Once you reach some of those goals makes it feel, feel a lot better. So the burnout happens and sometimes it's good to take a break, dude. I've taken multiple times in my career. I've taken three, four months off of the main tour events and just been like, okay, I'm not going to California. I don't feel it. I can't do it. See, that's and why I thought I did this off season though. See, I, I probably, I probably played disc golf. I probably threw try. or putted disc golf for less than like eight hours. This off. That's season. not the same thing, Brody. What I'm saying is you take time off of playing tournaments and you watch other people playing the tournaments. It'll get you back to being motivated. You're going to see them playing. You're going to watch them competing and you're going to either want to go back or you're not. And once you don't want to go compete against those guys, when you see them out there and you see the courses that you've played good at before and you're sitting at home, eventually you're going to be like, no, I missed the competition. I want to do that. Or you find something else like that's yeah, always this, a thing as well. Yeah. David, David just made a comment. And I think this, this is where I've, if you have followed me from the very beginning, if you have followed me from my ultimate career, my trick shots, if you follow me from the very beginning, you will know that, 
I literally do stuff because I love doing it. And yeah. David just said, sounds like it's turned into a job and not a passion anymore. I have, I have put so much work into my passions and I have honestly, cause I think there is a lot of luck to be involved, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that I had a connection with dude perfect and I was able to do a video with them early on definitely helped. That's not something that everyone has the ability. I was just in the right time at the right place. We went to the same church. Things kind of just fell in place for certain things. And then I also obviously worked hard at it, but that is something that I'm in a position right now where like, I don't need to have a job. Yeah. I, I can just, I can just be done. Me and Kelsey can just, you know, delete all our social media and just no one can, will see us ever again and we can just be done and we're fine. And so the, the money, the financial, the, that side that I think really motivates a lot of people and drives a lot of people makes them kind of get up in the morning and yeah, they don't want to go to their job, but they have to. See, That's I don't what think... I think is making this really hard because he said, sounds like it's turned into a job and it's not a passion anymore. And I have just always followed my passion, regardless of whether it was leading to money or not. I have always followed my passion. I was making no money when I first doing, when I first started doing YouTube. Right. And I didn't know if there was going to be any money in it. Um, but I was just making videos about how to throw a Frisbee and throwing Frisbees in the trash cans because I absolutely love doing it. And right now I love doing this podcast. I love working with Hunter with foundation. I still love acts aspects of disc golf, but the competitive side, I don't know what it is. I, I, I just was not fired up to play. And, um, you know, clearly that showed. Silas, I lost him. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. Do you still want to win? Is there still a goal? Like you, See, that's you've the always, thing. do you, that's the do you crazy not care? Thing. If I, if I would have won this weekend, I don't think anything changes. Like I was, there was moments in time. Of, is it me Silas or is it Yuli's internet? Uh oh, uh -oh. oh really? Yuli, your internet might be going in and out a little bit over there. I can hear you now. You got me? Yeah, Silas yeah, yeah, says yeah. he hasn't Silas says he hasn't lost me yet. Okay. Okay, so it's me. That's fine. It might just be your net. All right. Um yeah, so there were moments of where I played good and I was uh, one under, two under through portions. And it wasn't like my mood changed and I was like, "Oh, this is fun." And then when I played poorly, I was like, "Oh, this isn't fun." I I, I just I wasn't interested. And so um that's why I don't, and that's, that's the thing that's the bothersome is old Brody after a performance like this would come back to Dallas and be like, I need a freaking grind and I'm going to go out and get a top 10 in Waco. That's just not the case anymore, man. And I'm wondering, did you lose me again? Did we lose you? And, and this is, this is a big one. Cause I was talking to uh, shout out to both my caddies too. Cause they were, they were great to talk to. Cause we were kind of having these conversations cause they were both roughly my age. So we were kind of having these conversations while we were playing. Cause they both were like, yeah, man, I, I can totally see like, you're just, you're just not in it. And, um, the thing is, is like the competitive side and the winning like that has to be there. You have to have that goal and drive to want to actually win, to want to actually compete. And the question that I have is, was disc golf, was disc golf just fun and enjoyable because it was new? That, that is a concern or that's a question that I'm having right now. Did I really just like disc golf a whole lot? because I wasn't good at it. I didn't know how to throw these discs. I didn't know what these discs were. And was that like the fun part? Like, was it the newness of it was what it was fun. And then once I kind of figured all that out, I realized like, Oh, like disc golf. I'm not actually, I don't actually Every really like this as much as I thought I did. 
everything's like that. You find a new game that you like you and you, and you get addicted to it and then it runs out of its whatever. Everything's like that. But I, I think for myself, listen, from the first time that I started playing this till now, of course, there's not as much passion. When you're first learning how to play disc golf, it's like the best time of your life. You're outside. Hmm. There's new things. You learn something new every day. It, it, at some point it does become a job because it is our job. Um, for me, I like competition. That's what I like. Disc golf, it, I don't practice as much as I used to. I still do it because it's my job to go out there and do it, and I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy going to a field and throwing a bunch of stuff. Sometimes it's therapeutic, but th- something that's therapeutic is usually not that fun either, like meditating takes concentration and like patience and blah, 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 blah. It's not the funnest thing. You know what I mean? Hanging out with the, with your buddies and playing a game of basketball. That's fun to me. That's like yes. extremely fun, yeah. right? That's mm-hmm. a, a, a big joy of my life. If I could do that, hanging with my mm-hmm. friends, joking around and blah, 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 blah. That's the funnest part that you'll ever have in your life. Disc golf, not so fun, but I love competition. And when I look at, tournaments i hold on to a belief in my heart in my heart that i'm going to win again right and that's mm-hmm. exciting for me to chase that because i know i'm getting older and i can and that's what's pushing me to to keep doing it is because i'm like no i want to prove the world wrong like i don't want like you know what i mean like i have those goals i want to set a bar of being like no i'm going to prove the world wrong whatever they think yeah they think mm-hmm. that i'm getting burnt out they think i don't love it people are going to listen to me talk about like this and blah 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 and then i want to do it and that's going to be awesome because all of that burnout and blah, blah 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 will be worth it at that point in time and there'll be a new passion and blah 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 i always said this it's a good thing i never want to major it's a good thing because a lot like you i love new things I love like when I started playing pickleball, dude, I played every single day. I loved it. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely a blast. Cause it was a new thing for me to learn. I was bad at it. I love being bad at something and then getting good at it. Right. Yes. But I also made a deal with myself that disc golf, I wasn't going to leave it because I want to make it better. Right. So I have these other things too pushing me along. Like I, I always say this, people wonder why I do so much stuff. And I tell them, it's because I don't want anybody else doing it. I think I can do it better than them. And I love disc golf because of what it's given me that I have to give back, right? I have to make disc golf. When I'm done, I want it to be a better place. Plus the goals of, of those other things. And that it's yeah. not fun getting well, beat see, by these guys, <laughs> these young kids every single week by a hundred strokes is not fun. It's depressing. But, but this is where I'm having a little bit of dilemma because Ultimate Frisbee, I never, I never, I played it for 10 years. I never got to the point of where it wasn't fun or got to the point where it felt like a job. I got removed from Ultimate Frisbee because of injuries. You're then, also then, young. Then I go, fairly, yeah. Then I go to golf later in my life. Same thing. I didn't remove myself from golf because I was no longer having fun. I got to the point in golf where I was like, hey, the next step is for me to either move to Latin America or move to like Asia and play on the Latin America tour or the Asian tour. And at this point, me and Kelsey had just recently got married, which we actually, our fifth year is coming up in a few days. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you, You're not too far behind us. But uh, (laughs) at that point in time, I was like, do I want to completely, you know, she was going to stay in Dallas and come visit here and there. But I was like, I'm newly married. Do I want to just be gone all the time? And that's what is now my life. I'm gone all the yeah. time. I, I don't see her very often as much as I do. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of these things kind of play into it. And um, yeah, priorities change. And um, I think I'm definitely going to take your advice of what you said. I think you said some really good stuff. I think this season, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the schedule and just kind of pick the tournaments that I'm like, these are the ones I want to play. Um, I've got another year uh, with Discraft on my contract. So I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that at the end of the year that they're happy with um, signing me. Right. 
And, um, you know, obviously we're going to still do this podcast. I'm still going to be involved with foundation Atlas. I'm going to still do all that. But, uh, this was, that was just a, it was a very weird moment for me. It was a very raw moment for me. Cause you know me, I'm crazy competitive and I had no fire this past week. It's okay. That's the thing. Like it's you the can't, first time it's ever happened in my life. You can't so beat yourself up about scary. stuff. Like it was that. very it's, scary. I'm, I know. Yeah. But it's just that's like I would have allowed general. you to just walk up to me and punch me in the face and I wouldn't have done anything. <laughs> I would have allowed you just to dominate me. And I would have just been like, <laughs> I would have laid down and be like, yeah, all right, whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think another thing that I, that I see that I tell, I tell a lot of people is the off season can be for two things. Don't do anything. And then as soon as the tour starts, you're going to get your butt kicked. You're going to get killed now because you can't take time off. There's no time. You're going to get lapped. And I do, and I do believe this, the harder you work, the easier it is to play because you've already sacrificed and so when the tournament starts, the jitters hit because you sacrificed all this time of being like, no, this is what I want to do. This is what I did. I deserve to play good. And it gets the tournament jitters back. Somebody who doesn't practice and shows up to a whole one, there's no expectations. The only expectation no. is, is this, I didn't do anything this off season. Yeah. You know, this isn't going to no they, nerves. There maybe no it, nerves this past yeah. week. <laughs> maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's maybe I just come out and that's what you know. You're testing the water. You're trying to convince yourself that it was okay to not do much in the off season and then play. That's not the way it works, man. Yeah, I, think I went the back zone... to a lot of ultimate frisbee mode. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ultimate frisbee form out there. <laughs> oh. But it, but it's the truth. You know what I mean. The harder you practice, the more pressure you put on yourself. Yeah. The more sure. in the zone when they get on the first tee, you're like, yeah, it's my time. I put in the time. It's my time to do this thing. And when you don't do it, you're not going to get those nerves and you're going to get stomped. 